Welcome my Disney guests. I know that I said the next episode was going to be the Haunted Mansion part three, but since I have just come back from Disneyland and the Oogie Boogie Bash, that experience needs to jump the line. Just as other projects would make Disneyland's Haunted Mansion's progress be put on hold, we'll get back to the story of the mansion later. We went to the first bash of the season. The record heat wave made attending a real struggle for many people, including myself. And I had many items to help me stay cool, but that's a different episode. One poor gal actually started to collapse right in front of us while we were inside an air conditioned store. I'm guessing the first aid center was probably quite busy. But in spite of the heat, the Oogie Boogie Bash was a delightful event. Now I love to get into character when I'm in costume. I was a drama geek in high school, so it comes naturally. Last year it was challenging to get the others to play along, but not this year. It was so much fun to act like Loki, and the kids kept asking Melissa if she was the real Thor. Variants. I kept saying that we found a multiverse portal and decided to see what the other reality was like. But I was also complaining that we wanted to go to Jodenheim to cool off. Cast members reacted to my scepter on them for mind control. So all in all, everyone was having a good time at the party. Guests can come in the park in costume at 3 p.m. for the mix-in but they need to exit the park and re-enter with their party tickets to get their wristbands to stay in the park. The party foods and exclusives come out about 6 p.m. or a little after. In the past, the after dark partiers get a wristband and a lanyard. This time it was just a wristband. I do have to say I like having the lanyard to add a nice collection from all of the previous events. After having experienced the event last year, we had a better plan as to what we wanted to do and what we were okay with skipping. So honestly, I doubt that there was a way to do everything in the five hours once the party gets started. We saw the parade last year and figured it would be pretty much the same as the year before. So our goal this year was meet and greet and photo ops. We weren't really interested in getting all the candy on the trick or treat trail. So we skipped the candy stations, but I did get some applesauce pouches at the healthy stations. Now, I don't know why that tasted so good that night, but it was exactly what I needed. As we didn't have anything that was based on a schedule, parade, shows, etc., we took a clockwise walk around the park to get an idea of where everything was and where the characters were stationed. Since we were Loki and Thor, we figured starting in Marvel Campus was the best place to begin. When the cast members saw our costumes, they let us know that our variants were wandering around somewhere. One cast member even told us that keeping track of Thor and Loki or wandering around Marvel campus was like trying to keep track of toddlers or cats. <laughs> With as much power as those two possess, they pretty much get to do whatever they want. Agatha Harkness was holding court in the Doctor Strange show area. She is a very popular character and she takes any opportunity to talk smack about Wanda, especially if there's someone dressed as the Scarlet Witch. And occasionally the song, Agatha All Along, plays and everyone starts singing along with We got photos with Black Widow, 
Captain America, and of course Lots with Loki and Thor. We then cut through Cars Land where cars had their costumes on and the mountainside of Radiator Springs was lit up in all sorts of rainbow colors. So of course I had to get a panoramic photo of it. That's how beautiful it looked. Then we took a shortcut through Pacific Wharf area to head to Pixar Pier. Pacific Wharf was all about the food, but Captain Hook was having a fun meet and greet near the pier. At Pixar Pier, Sid from Toy Story was greeting people. Well, he was mostly insulting them. What do you expect from a bratty kid who destroys toys? You look like you could be one of my experiments. <laughs> Take the dog back together. If you are a magic key holder, you can go around behind the Silly Symphony Swings for an exclusive photo op. Last year was the Hocus Pocus Spellbook. This year was the stylized backdrop of the Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion. Over in Paradise Gardens Park, they had Dr. Facilier sitting up on a mini stage where he could talk or harass people. Finally, a dignitary. It's so nice to have an elected official here. So what are you going to do to help us make things better for Halloween around here? Well, that's right. You can't do anything by yourself. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good team around here. Then down on the World of Color stage near the water, Mickey was greeting all of his happy fans. Several weeks before the Halloween season, Disney released a teaser video for the new characters that would be at the bash. They never said who that would be, so there were lots of theories floating around on the internet. One part of the teaser of the video showed three candles where the flames go out. And I thought maybe that would be for the Sanderson sisters. Nope, it was for Bruno from Encanto. He was so popular, the line was crazy long. It began here and went all the way over here. In fact, the line was so long, it started to blend in with another line. So you had people facing in opposite directions in their respective lines. A bit confusing. So I guess if you want to meet up with Bruno, that's going to take a big part of your evening. Near Villains Grove, we discovered another character. Strictly speaking, not an official Disney character, but a character nonetheless. We ran into Chris Provost of Provost Park Pass. Now I'm a fan of his. His videos almost always teach me something I never knew about the park. And he's pretty punny. I mean funny. No, I definitely mean punny. After making the complete loop, we realized that we didn't take the back way through Hollywoodland. There, Cruella DeVille had taken over the Hollywood backlot stage with all of her clothing designs. Then a little further on, in front of what is stage 12, Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle were out in their costumes dressed as the Sanderson sisters. We got near the front of the line just as they were taking a break. So we got to use their backdrop and stage settings for our own photo shoot until they came back out. They were just too cute to be evil witches. As the evening was almost at an end, we headed to Guardians of the Galaxy after dark. Before we got there, we noticed a character we had missed. Remember when I mentioned the teaser of the new characters? One teaser image was a video of a teapot with a flower disintegrating and dying in it. I knew right away that was for Mad Madam Mim. She had a stage tucked back in the side of the Hyperion Theater before you get to Guardians of the Galaxy, and we almost missed her. Since the majority of the party goers were either on the opposite side of the park or had left for the night, we got to walk right up to her without waiting. Yes. Hello there! Yes, I'm the magnificent, marvelous Madam M, and you are? Thor. Thor? Yes. Just one name, Thor. Yes, that's how good I am. That's how good. Uh, that's how good you are? Well, Merlin is, I like oh, you. I like you too. Oh, where can you get along? Is that a magic center? Oh yeah. What does it do? Old people. <laughs> I love that. I can't really control people, mainly just shape shift, but a magic thing that can control people. Tooth ideas. Oh. I don't understand why more mortals just have a whole set of teeth. Uh, Too much work. Uh, yeah. Why? Why would you want to deal with that when one can just 
Big, what can get it done? Oh, I like you. Your brother, sister, sibling. Reminds me too much of Merlin. That bungler. She's such a goodie. She's been ruining all my mischief today. Gross. You are like Merlin. Now off you get. Go disappear. She was hilarious. We finished off the night riding Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark. During the mix-in hours, the attraction is the regular version with the Guardians escaping from the Collector's Museum. But when the party starts, they close down the ride and switch it over to the monster version. At the Halloween parties and maybe the villain nights is the only time you get to see the monster version of it. After all that, we were hot and tired, but happy. The park was closing and we headed back to the hotel to undo all the assembly work we had done putting our costumes and makeup on and mostly undoing the hair. My takeaway? I think coming to the party early in the season is great, but it also tends to be hotter, which is tough on some people. But most were smiling as we exited the gates. So, knowing all the information from the evening and the temperatures, would I go again next year? You bet. Any costume ideas?